Have you ever been so in your flipping mind that you overthink something until it is a much bigger problem than when you started thinking about it? <laughs> if that is you, this podcast episode is for you because again, I'm going to teach you the bombshell business woman coaching framework. This is the framework that I use when I laser coach at conferences. This is the framework that I'm using behind the scenes to ensure that whoever it is that I'm coaching is getting a complete and total picture. Hi there, and welcome back, or welcome if this is your first time to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle, and I'm thrilled that you are choosing to spend your very limited and precious time with me and your fellow bombshells who are listening along today. Now, I want to give you a teaser of what this episode is going to be about. Then we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping, and then we're going to come right back to the point of the episode. So in this episode, I'm going to teach you the bombshell businesswoman coaching framework so that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your problem is or how alone you feel or how available your bestie is or not, you will have the framework to coach yourself through any problem. So that is what we are going to cover today. And I think that you're going to get a lot out of this episode and I will be coaching myself on this episode. First, I want to um, read a rating and review. We haven't done that in a long time. As you know, I've kind of had a windy road on this podcast. And for those of you who are still hanging in there with me, I treasure you. And for those who left and was like, I don't know what this chick's doing. Like I completely understand the path that I was on was the path that I was on. And the things that I needed to do were the things that I needed to do, but we're back. We're grounded. We know exactly what we're meant to do and what is right, not only for us, but for our audience and our customers. And, and that's really about seeing and supporting strong women as they are becoming. That's really what we do. And there's, there's lots of ways that we do that. And, and I'll get into it maybe in another episode, but I, I just really think it's important for us to, um, stay on our core focus. Okay. So I would love, 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 love. If you would take a moment and go to whatever listening app that you listen to this podcast on and leave an honest rating and review. Most of you, I know, listen to on Apple uh, podcasts. And so that's where I go to check the rating and reviews because there's always new ones there. So I'm going to read you one from, uh, December and it is from PCB zombie. <laughs> I have been following Amber for over a year now after seeing her speak at an online event during the height of COVID her passion, self-awareness and ability to speak about truths, both good and bad is magnetic. You are drawn in by her unpretentious tone and manner. I had the very good fortune to cross paths and meet her in person recently. And I say this with conviction, this woman is the definition of grace and grit and all the while being charming, kind <laughs> and ultimately relatable. Thanks for the work you do to help other women speak their truths, uncover their passions and become a bombshell. I have a feeling I know who this person is, who I was able to meet at a conference that I recently spoke at. So thank you, PCB zombie. If you are who I think you are, um, what a treasure you are. And I, I just really appreciate those kind words. And I want those of you who are listening and I'm not reading these rating and reviews because I need an ego fluff. I read them because it helps other listeners who maybe this is their first time listening, or they just started listening and they're a couple episodes in to understand what this is about and what they can expect. And that's why your rating and reviews are so important because people are going to check those before they tune in. And if they read a bunch of great reviews, then they're going to say, okay, well, maybe this is for me. And then you know, if it's a fit, it's a fit. And if not, we wish them well. So that's that. Um, the other thing, I feel like I'm beating my chest, <laughs> but I tell you all the time, don't shrink, don't shrink. So I'm not going to shrink in this. Um, and honestly, I have you to thank 
you, if you bought my book, if you listen to the podcast, the downloads, the shares, the social media interactions, all of those things, your votes. I only asked a couple of times if y'all would vote for me for global gurus, um, brand professionals. And a couple of years ago, I ended up on the list and I was super surprised and very grateful. And I was in the like 21 or 23 or something like that. And then through COVID, I was like, ain't no way I'm making that because I haven't been on the road speaking. I hadn't really been putting out podcasts until we, we eventually did. I, I was doing some YouTube videos, but I really wasn't out there. And, you know, I'm not the greatest about my list. I'm trying really, really hard to stay in touch with everybody, but I, I've just, COVID was hard and we were all dealing with a lot of things. And I still ended up in the top 30 brand professionals in the world, according to global gurus, but I fell down a little bit. I think I was maybe in the higher twenties, like 27 or 28 or something like that. I can't recall. And then this year I'm number eight, y'all number eight. And you did that because I'm sorry, but nobody's that great to do it on their own. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just the way that you interact with me, the way that you voted, the way that you um, are loyal to this brand of saying, heck yeah, I'm a bombshell. Like that is what shot me up to number eight in the world. Um, and you know, some, some people can say, well, that's a vanity metric. Um, but I know in my industry, we all have our eyes on that list. So there's, you know, one for leadership, there's one for coaching, there's one for motivational speaker, there's one for branding, there's one for a lots of different types of thought leaders. Um, and so I really just appreciate that. And, um, honestly, for as hard as I've worked and trying to get the train back on the tracks after COVID decimated, uh, my business and lots of businesses like mine, um, and had to really remodel and think, what is it that you all want from me and need from me? It, this was just very affirming. So I, I, I treasure that. And I thank you. Okay. Have you ever been so in your flipping mind that you overthink something until it is a much bigger problem than when you started thinking about it? <laughs> if that is you, this podcast episode is for you because again, I'm going to teach you the bombshell business woman coaching framework. This is the framework that I use when I laser coach at conferences. This is the framework that I'm using behind the scenes to ensure that whoever it is that I'm coaching is getting a complete and total picture. Now I can do this in 20 minutes or less, and we can come up with a great plan if we follow this framework. So I'm going to share it with you. Okay. And I want you to use it as often as possible. So let me go over the different steps. There's five steps to this, and um, I'm going to just tell you what they are. And then I'm going to break them down a little bit. And then I was actually going to use a different example and just not give the name or like any identifying details, but I decided I literally just got done with a hypnotherapy session. And for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, Amber satanic. No, 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 no. Hypnotherapy isn't anything crazy. <laughs> it's, um, it's not like you're clucking around like a chicken. You're completely in control of yourself. It just puts you into a deep relaxation. Now I'm a high energy, high anxiety person. And so hypnotherapy allows me and my whole body to release so that I can actually tap into those parts of me to find my truth or to do any type of forgiveness work or inner child work or anything like that. And why do I do all these things? Well, one, because I love me and I should take care of me. But the other reason is I take care of you too. So if I'm not constantly staying on my game, how am I going to show up for you to help you with what you've got going on? So I find it both a gift to myself and a responsibility of my vocation. Okay. So here we go. The five steps are heart, mind, grit, community, and service. Heart, mind, grit, community, and service. So let me break those down. We have to go to the heart first. We so want to go to the mind first. And some of us, if you're like me, you have head heart conflict. <laughs> your head is saying one thing, your heart is saying another thing. And you're like, which one do I listen to? 
I will tell you, your grandmama will tell you, always follow your heart. Okay. When you follow your heart, you unlock your truth, your truth. And anyone who knows me knows who knows me well, knows that when I speak my truth, like if I'm brainstorming or if I'm talking through a challenge and I speak my truth and then I get tears behind my eyes and I choke up, then that is my truth. That is my heart saying, yes, girl, you, you, you have it. That is it. You just spoke your truth. So the first step is heart unlock your truth. The second step is mind create your strategy. Okay. So now we get to use that mind, that overactive mind. So many of us women have. So once we know what our heart really wants, what is true for us, now we can go up to our mind and say, how do we get there? What are the steps we need to take in order to get to where our heart wants to go? The third piece is grit. You have to ground yourself in unwaveringly in unwavering strength. Now, I tend to attract really strong women who have a past (laughs) There's something in their past. Um, we don't necessarily attract the people who have been on easy street their whole life and, uh, and no shame if you are, and you're still welcome to be a part of the bombshell community, but the women we work with have something pretty hard that they've had to overcome. And that's what makes them who they are. And I know that I talk about being a teen mom and Lord knows there's plenty of stuff past that, that I could talk about, but I do that because I want you to see how I ground myself in strength, because like, if I can do that, and if I can overcome that, I can do anything. And so that grit is just finding where you're going to plant yourself like a mighty oak and say, like, I'm not going to get knocked over by this. I've done this, 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 and this in my past, and I can handle this problem and be victorious. So we've gone to our heart and we were like, heart, what's your truth? Then we go to our mind and we are like, all right, mind, it's finally your turn. Let's create the strategy. Once you create that strategy, you're like, oh, snap. It's probably going to be hard. So you've got to ground yourself in a wavering strength through grit. And then the next thing, once we are completely checked in with ourselves and we are grounded in everything that we know to be true and the things about our past that give us evidence of what we can expect for our future, then we go to step number four, which is community. And that is seek and share support. So what that might look like is, you know, having an accountability partner, maybe it's just making sure that you find the friends, find the peers, find the group that you need to be with that is vibrating at your, at your level, that you're equally energetically matched, that you have same values and beliefs that you have good attitudes, that these are people that when you spend time with them, they are moving you towards what you want in life and not away from what you want in life. And not only do you need to seek that support, but you need to participate by sharing that support. When you put yourself out there, don't be an overgiver. Make sure it's an energetic match. It's a two-way street. You, you get, and you give like, if it's, if it's not that, it's not a relationship that you need to be in. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't relationships where sometimes one person is giving more than the other and we all have our ups and downs. I'm not saying that. But if by and large somebody is taking and they're not giving, that's not your community. Okay. So just to recap again, we go to our heart, we find our truth. Then we go to our mind and we create our strategy. And then we grab our grit (laughs) and ground ourselves in unwavering strength. And then we go to, or we create community so we can seek and share support. And then, then we look how we could be in service in a larger way, harness and focus your greatness and do something with it. So, you know, yeah, I was a teen mom. So there's my grit. Right. And, and I find my bombshell community and then I harness and I focus my ability to see you, to understand you, to help you see yourself, to help you understand your value, to help you position your value. We call it branding because yes, we do personal branding and yes, we do employer branding. And in some instances we even do business branding, but really the most important part of my service to you is to help you 
understand who you're made to be so that you too can be in service to others because psychologically that is joy. That is happiness. When we can use what we are made of and be in service to other people, and that's happening all the time, that's where joy and happiness and fulfillment comes in. So heart, mind, grit, community service, heart, unlock your truth, mind, create your strategy, grit, ground yourself in unwavering strength, community, seek and share support and service, harness and focus your greatness. Those are the steps. So I said that I was going to do this, um, just pull somebody that I've coached before and kind of reframe it and hide their identity and walk you through this. And I thought, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm asking you to self-coach. Shouldn't I lead the charge? Shouldn't I be a good example? So let's do this thing. When we unlock our truth, that is, that is exactly what we need to keep dipping back into. So I'm going to give you an example or use myself as an example. And then I'm going to just kind of break it down for you a little bit further. So unlock your truth. My truth that I showed up to hypnotherapy tonight is that, um, I am not treating myself well. I am not doing the deep self-care that y'all know I'm generally committed to. I know that there's a reason and I'm going to show myself grace instead of being my own worst critic and letting Gertrude wonk, wonk, wonk in my ear and doing all that negative self-talk. I know that it's been a crazy past year. I know that November was crazy. I know that I kicked off December with a big conference. I had some other engagements. I was sick most of December. Then I have the holidays. I hosted both Thanksgiving and Christmas at my house. And then I don't even know where I was in January. It's a, it's a big blur. I was so happy to do it. I'm not complaining whatsoever. I was so happy to be back on the road, but sometimes you wake up and you're like, Oh, what city am I in? I don't even know. Then there was like travel drama with weather and the crazy weather that we've had. And I woke up in February and I was like, mm, 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 mm. what is going on? What is happening in my body? What, what am I eating? What am I drinking? Like, this isn't how I live. And so my, my heart, the, the truth that I need to unlock and I'm going to take notes on myself while I'm doing this. So if you're watching on YouTube, like you're legit watching me laser coach myself. Okay. So my truth is I am not loving myself. Well, that's the truth. If I was loving myself, just think about who in your life that you love, that you just adore, like maybe a child, maybe your spouse, maybe your best friend. If you wanted the best for them, how would you treat them? Would you help them with any goal that they set, the, set their minds to? Would you help them nourish their bodies? Would you help them find ways to exercise and find ways to clear their mind and make sure that they're doing the things? Would, if they said, I want you to support me in doing these things, you would slay dragons to ensure that this happened. But for ourselves, we're like, nah, I'm kind of busy. I've got lots of things going on. And we could also add, I've had some transition on my team, which I'm super thrilled for um, my, for, for uh, basically my operations manager, um, super thrilled for her. What a great opportunity for her um, to go back to the employer she had before COVID. I mean, legit, they're like, you get to borrow her. And then I borrowed her for like over a year. <laughs> Oopsies, <laughs> but I'm super thrilled for her. And I love her to death, but that it was just really, I mean, difficult timing, if you will, um, with all of my schedule. And so onboarding people. So I'm taking care of everything and everybody and parts of my business that I haven't really had to deal with in a long time. And so I put myself last. Okay. So heart is un lock your truth. So my truth is I'm not loving myself well. So mind, if we're going to that, we need to create our, our strategy. So I will love myself well by, okay. So what can we do? 
what can we do to love myself well? Well, I can say when I get back from my next trip, because I'm going to be gone for a week, multiple cities. <laughs> but when I get back from my trip, um, we are going to um, go to bed by 10 p.m., which means I cannot work until 8 p.m. and then think that I'm going to have some kind of like wind down time whatsoever. So um, go to bed by 10 p.m. Another thing is um, stop working <laughs> by, we're going to say 6 p.m. Because sometimes, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty good for me. Um, then let's see here. We are going to exercise. Um, and let me say lift weights three times a week. Now, normally I do like four, maybe even five, but I'm out of the habit. So we're going to do three times a week. Um, and then we're going to do yoga two times a week. Probably more than that because I'm currently in a challenge, but we're just trying to make things realistic here. And I have not been journaling a lot lately, which is very bizarre for me because I'm quite the journaler. So I'm going to um, get up early enough to journal. And then part of that journal process is going to be to speak kindly to myself. So just to give you an example of another person that I recently did some laser coaching, um, one of the things that we did in her, um, on the grit section of hers is she kept, she's to keep a journal for 30 days about what makes her awesome and implement, um, a prayer practice that to thank God for how awesome he is. That, that was what she wanted to do. And, um, and the reason why was she was not valuing herself. And so that is a step that we can take now for some of you that do all these kinds of things, this is not like an ultimate strategy for you, right? I'm not loving my, Oh wait, there's one more. I've got to do this too. We are going to, um, uh, cut out alcohol. And you're like, Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? Um, I cut out alcohol for like four months during COVID and I slept better. My anxiety was reduced. Um, I was just happier. Like you could even see on my face, like everybody's like, why are you glowing? And I'm like, yeah, cause I don't drink. And it's really not that important to me to be quite honest. And I live by myself. So it's not like I'm tempted by anybody. And if I go out and my, and my friends pout, like they can just pout, it's fine. Um, but just getting that out of my system, not saying I'm not ever going to drink again, but just getting that out of my system is going to be one of the things that's going to be me loving myself well. Um, and I'm not, honestly, I'm not really that tempted by it. It's just like, if it's there, I drink it. And then that's not good for me. And it clogs up your liver and it's basically poison. So anyways, these are not crazy things. And then some of you might be like, oh my God, you're going to tackle all of those. Well, if you knew how I typically live, like this is a very short list on how Amber takes care of herself. Okay. So, I mean, I do water therapy. I have a bad a hot tub from one of my clients, a hot spring spas, like the best hot tub swim spa dealer in the world. Uh, there's a lot that I do. So if I'm not loving myself, well, here are the things that I can do every single day to show myself that I matter as much as my clients, as my kids, as my friends, that's what I have to do. All right. So now grit ground yourself and unwavering strength. So here's what I'm going to do there. When I think about grit, I think about if I did that before and I overcame that, then this bad mama jamma can do anything. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the COVID times and I'm going to regularly read my journal, which could be painful because there was a lot of, uh, awareness that came out during that time about what was true and what was not true in my life. And so reading through that journal could be painful, but it also can show me that even though your life was calling, kind of falling apart and you were seeing what was happening for the first time, 
then you still got through that loving yourself. You still took care of yourself. You still did all of these things. In fact, you might've been healthier and physically happier than a long, long time. So if it's true for that time, it could be true for this time. If it could be true when crazy things were happening in the world and there was so much uncertainty and my clients were crying every single day and I, and everything in my personal life was bizarre and unsettled, um, then I can do anything now. Right. So regularly read my journal. And then another thing that I love to do is I like to go back through my phone and look at pictures because what that does is it brings back memories of like, what was I doing? What was going on then? How was I taking care of myself? I probably have all kinds of uh, selfies with my dog. I probably have all kinds of um, pictures of the really long walks that I used to go on. And then what that does for me, at least is it puts me back in that place of like, yeah, that was totally worth it. That was, man, I felt amazing. Look at that picture. Look how great my skin looked in that picture. I want that again. That is who I am. That is my highest self right there. And I want to have that manifested in me again. So I'm going to put on here to ground myself in unwaveringly strength. I'm going to pull on my grit and I am going to both read my journal from, um, we'll, we'll say from 2020 and, um, review photos from 2020. Um, and then community. All right. Seek and share support. First of all, I have my team. <laughs> And I have a bad mamma jamma team. Okay. Um, so they are my support in my work life. And, and, and the more that I can ensure that they feel empowered to do what they're doing, even though some of them are new, the more I can focus on making sure that I'm not working around the clock. Um, also sweet Sophia, my personal assistant who runs errands for me, like, here's the thing y'all you don't think that it's that big of a deal. And, and, you know, I have to just recognize her. I meant to send her a text today to even tell her this, but yesterday she came to work and I mean, she's on payroll, like she clocks in all that kind of stuff. She came to work. And the first thing that I had her do was take my car to go fill it up. Well, this morning I had a meeting in another County that I had to drive to. And had she not filled my car up, I probably wouldn't have gotten to it. And then I would have been running out the door. Like I always do because I'm going from appointment to appointment to appointment. And then I would have had to stop and get gas. And I probably would have been late or super stressed out that I was about to be late the entire drive, which causes anxiety and weirdness. So Sophia is like, Oh, I just put gas in Amber's car. But to me, that reduced stress. It took something off my morning. And then that is also helping to create the environment where I get to take care of myself and show myself love. Right. So don't underestimate the small things in this process because small things, when all put together, create big pictures, small choices, small habits, create your future. Okay. I'm going to say that again, small decisions, small choices, those all create your future. Whatever I'm deciding or I'm not deciding will impact tomorrow. It'll impact today. So just remember that. So when we go back to community, seek and share support. So team, I am definitely growing my team. And we're even um, talking about bringing on some more coaches and trainers and things like that. So that um, it, it's not always me doing all the things. And um, another thing for community I would say there's a yoga community that I can be plugged into that will help me focus my attention on really being the holistic and um, self-loving person that I deserve to be. So let's put that to like, I'm actually going to participate in my yoga online community. Okay. All right. So we've unlocked my truth. I am not loving myself well. And I need to start loving myself. Well, my mind, we created our strategy. I will love myself well by going to bed by 10 PM, stop working by 6 PM, lift weights three times a week, 
uh, practice yoga two times a week. I'm going to get up early enough to journal. I'm going to speak kindly to myself, shut up Gertrude, and I'm going to cut out alcohol grit, ground yourself in unwaveringly strength. I will love myself well by regularly reading my journal and reviewing photos from 2020 to remember my highest self community. I will love myself well by growing and investing in my team and by participating in my online yoga community service. Boop, boop. I will love myself well by, Oh, and here's my truth. <laughs> here's the truth. Cause when I say it, or I'm about to say it, you can see the tears in my eyes. This is not, I'm not, there's no way of fabricating this. Anybody who knows me knows I, <laughs> you're going to see the truth all over my face. I'm, I'm not great at BSing. Um, not exactly the best poker player, um, but harness and focus my greatness. I will love myself well by doubling down on my bombshell community and doing everything that I know to do to serve you. And the crazy thing is, is that when I serve you, I actually do receive love back. And just even reading, um, reading what this rating and review said, or, um, I sent out an email to my OGs, um, in my, my community, my paid community. And, um, one of them wrote an email to me and it was just a subject line. And you have to know her. We call her the God, the Godfather. Um, she is amazing. And it was just, you know, it brought me such a smile and, um, this is hard. I'm not going to fool you. I don't just wake up every day and it's easy to produce a podcast and be consistent. And I'm not a consistent personality. Um, I'm fully dependent on my team just to be clear. They're amazing. It's not easy to, um, fly to Eugene, Oregon and know that you're going to have a layover and then you check in and you do all the things you do everything right. And the plane still leaves you. And so you have to figure out, okay, well, I'm in Salt Lake city. How am I going to get to Eugene, Oregon? Well, it's not going to happen till midnight. So now I have to find something to Portland. Now I have to rent a car. Now I have to get there like hot mess express wasn't my fault. That's just what life is. It, it, this looks sexy and it looks like, Ooh, look at Amber's exciting life. She speaks on stages and she goes and consults and works with, you know, seven figure business, female business owners. And yeah, that's, it's fun. And it is like, it is my oxygen, but it is hard. Okay. <laughs> it would be much easier. I think for me to just get a, a job and, um, uh, it wouldn't be as rewarding, but it'd be a lot easier to just kind of like phone it in every day and give a B effort when I know I can give an A effort, but my B is going to be pretty comparable to most people's A's and just skate. And that's not what my heart's called to do. So when I get teared up and the way that I'm going to love myself is because I know if I don't love myself, I can't model that for you. And I expect you to love yourself without question, because you are freaking amazing. So to recap this process, it is heart. Unlock your truth. What is your truth? What is your heart telling you? Whatever your problem is, you have to start here. It could be, um, I am not saving money enough, or it could be, I'm not selling enough. It could be, I'm selling so much that I don't have time for myself. It could be, I have a conflict with my, uh, you know, my 11 year old son, it, it could be anything, but if we don't know what your truth is, then we don't know how to truly address the heart issue. And it could be a mind issue all you want, but it's your heart that is telling you, Hey, there's a problem. Hello. I want your attention. There's a problem here. You don't get rubbed the wrong, wrong way at work because your brain's like, they shouldn't have said that it's your heart. That's hurt. It's your heart. That's injured. So start with the heart, unlock your truth, then move to the mind and create your strategy. Use that brilliant mind of yours to show the heart, how you're going to get there. Ground yourself in unwaveringly and unwavering strength. I keep wanting to say unwaveringly because it's the bombshell businesswoman is bold, brave, unwaveringly confident woman. Um, clearly, I like that word. 
You got to get that grit. You got to look to the past and say, what did I do before? And how can I leverage that mojo that I was gifted through that challenge and apply it to this? Now, it doesn't have to be directly, you know, I mean, like a lot of the, um, a lot of the times that I get kind of stuck in my business, I'm like, oh, can I really do that? I think back to my days at Gaylord Hotels, like ridiculous. The things that we did there were crazy. Like we, I would have an idea and I'd brainstorm with my team and then we'd take the idea and then we would like make it 12 times better. And then like later on, we're like, well, that was, that was the grand finale or that was the big wow at the end, but now we need a even bigger wow. So we were always looking to up-level things. And then we didn't really even know if it was going to work. And even like my vendors and everybody who is involved, like we all were totally on the same team of communications and events, even if they were external vendors. And we would get to the end of an event, like a large event and just laugh, like truly cackle because we were like, I cannot believe we pulled that off. Like, what the heck? How did we do that? And, um, and it was such a rewarding feeling. So when I'm thinking about grit it's not always, oh, I was a teen mom or I, you know, I really did well through COVID or anything like that. It can be anything that you overcame in your life. I was able to do wild and crazy, super successful things when I worked for Gaylord hotels. And, um, and so now in my business, I'm like, if I could do that, like, this is nothing like I could do pretty much anything I put my mind to. So again, Heart, unlock your truth, mind, create your strategy, grit, ground yourself in unwavering strength, community, seek and share support. Listen, cowgirl, mm -mm, you can't do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. You got to find your community and maybe your community for certain things is different than your community for other things. There is a reason why churches have small groups. There is a reason why we run in packs, why we have a squad. I mean, I think about three of my girlfriends, shout out Kirby, shout out. Brittany, shout out Tiffany. I mean, when I think about like being around really strong business women, business minded women, like I think about them and, um, and they're just a text message away of, you know, a silly meme I can send them or they'll text message me and be like, all right, it's time. It's time for a girl's night or whatever that is. So, um, get that. And then finally service harness and focus your greatness. You didn't come all this way to just hoard it. You didn't come through everything that you just worked through your heart, your mind, your grit, your community to just then be quiet mouse and sit in a corner, figure out how can I serve other people? And you will start to find that abundance just flows. You will start to find that your joy increases. You will start to find that there becomes meaning. There's hope. There is meaning and the pain there is, I mean, even like, oh, the crap that I went through last year, um, or the year before, even rather my parents almost died. I mean, I've told you all these things. My parents almost died. My business fell apart. I had to remodel it. My marriage just ended. Um, you know, just, I, I moved. There's so much that happened, but I know this sounds crazy, but time and time and time again, I have, um, had women that I've coached or have come into my life. And had I not gone through that season, I would not have understood what they were going through. Could I have empathy? Absolutely. I feel all the things, but to really sit in the pain with them and really be able to coach them from a very authentic and true place, because I was there and I overcame it. And I'm not saying there's not still pain, but I mean, I've really healed a lot (laughs) and I know what's best for me. And I know sometimes things have to happen. And when things happen to you, they're generally happening for you. And so, um, I believe that, and I can say that with conviction because I'm not, you know, Patsy perfect with this perfect life. I can say like, I understand your pain. So just never forget that service part. And I don't want you to be a martyr. I don't want you to be somebody who is always looking to take care of everybody else. You forget to take care of yourself. I'm just saying in your pain, in your own trials, don't forget that that can be leveraged and you can be in service to somebody else or what you learn through that 
can be leveraged in service to somebody else, or the joy you found on the other side of that can be leveraged in service to others. So heart, mind, grit, community, and service. Those are the five parts of the bombshell businesswoman coaching framework. And listen, not everybody has money to hire a coach. Not everybody has the money to find a therapist. Now, obviously if you have a true mental illness, or if you're struggling, then absolutely whatever it takes, please find a therapist. You can go back and listen to the episode that I have with Sharon Grosh. She does virtual um, appointments. She is the person that I refer my people to. Um, I'm not discounting therapy, but a lot of us, maybe we don't like need therapy because we don't have a problem, a mental problem to overcome. It's more about I'm here and I want to get here. And that's really what coaching is about. It's about elevating your experience about saying like, this is where I currently am. And I want to get over there, or maybe I don't even know where it is. I want to go. I just know that I'm, I'm not okay. Staying stagnant. And so you hire a coach to help you uncover all of those things. We problem solve. That's what coaching is. It's just problem solving. It's, it's finding a path forward. It's finding a way to elevate to the next level. And so this is my process. And I don't always say like, okay, tell me what's in your heart. But the questions that I ask, and let's be real, it's going to be a totally different thing to have somebody like me, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm extraordinarily intuitive. Discernment is my spiritual gift. I'm a raging empath. I have a decade worth of professional coaching experience. I'm certified, all that kind of stuff. I've coached hundreds and hundreds of women who are just like you, but that doesn't mean that you, that I'm accessible to you. And so it it was on my heart this week to say, well, let me just, let me just teach you how I do it. And then I really want this to be the framework moving forward. I want us all to be coaching ourselves and each other, call up your girlfriend and say, Hey, I want to coach you on something (laughs) and use my framework. Like, hello, open source. I don't even care. I'm not here to try to be a coach to every human on the planet. I'm here to empower you to make your life better. So you can become a bold, brave, unwaveringly confident woman. And you can't do that. If you don't even know how to self-regulate, you can't be a great leader. If you cannot first lead yourself. So please use this framework report back. And, um, and I think I'm going to try to, um, do some laser coaching to record sessions with listeners. And then maybe like once a month, we'll do a laser coaching session if we have enough interest in that. So, um, if you're interested in applying for that, and if I get an overwhelming response, we're not going to be able to pick everybody. And it might be that like I pick four and I record them and then it's four months worth. And then I, you know, there might be 50 people and I don't get to you. So if I don't get to you, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get to you. Okay. That just means like, we just haven't gotten that far down yet. And we'll try to pick challenges that might be in alignment with some of the themes that we have going on. So if we don't pick you, it's not because you're bad or wrong or that we don't love you, or we don't want to have that experience with you. It's just, you know, it's like a puzzle. That's all it is. Okay. So if, if you are supposed to be coaching with me and I'm supposed to have an experience with you, it's going to happen. It's going to work. So just trust the process. Okay. So if you want to do that, just go to amberhurdle.com forward slash podcast laser coaching, all one word, amberhurdle.com forward slash podcast laser coaching. And it's really simple. You're just going to give, um, let me see what's on the form here. You're going to give, um, your name, your first and last name, you're going to give, um, your email address and in a sentence or two, tell us what you would like to be coached on. And then I'm also asking for your phone number. Um, because if we can't get you by email, it goes to spam or something like that. We just want another way to get a hold of you. Um, if you are a long time listener, you know, I'm not a spammy kind of person. Also, I don't go to parties. I'm not invited to. So I don't like, if you don't want a piece of me, listen, there are plenty of people you could go party with in this world. I'm not it. I'm good with that. Okay. There are billions of people in the world. My people will find me. So fill out that form. And then remember laser coaching is one problem. We cannot boil the ocean. Okay. One problem. That's it. Just one problem. So, um, some of the problems that I have, that somebody has brought to me before is, 
basically, uh, let me think about, let me go through my coaching here. Hmm. So I don't value myself enough, meaning they're not charging enough. Um, they're in relationships where they're not valued. Um, and that is impacting their business. Um, I've had oodles of women say I'm overworked. I'm bringing work home every single night. I'm sitting with my PNL at nine o'clock at night watching, you know, real housewives or whatever. I don't have a life. I I'm not dating. I don't have any friends because all I do is work. I don't know anything about that. Um, but I'm, 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 I, I fell into that for about two months. I'm getting back out. I promise. I've got to lead by example. Um, another one is um, like, I'm not marketing to the right people. I'm not marketing to the right people. And believe it or not, when you go to the heart, there is a reason for that. There's some kind of internal conflict going on where, I mean, we're talking, you know, a million dollars or more, or maybe it's a high six figure business. And it's not that they don't have the resources. It's not that they don't have a team. It's not anything. It's there is a disconnect in their heart of who they actually want to be their customers. And so that's coming out in their, their marketing plan. Um, I'm trying to think of another one. Um, oh, I had one, one time where, um, we called her and this was actually a full coaching client. Um, we were joking because she said that she shows up like a golden retriever. And that people don't take her seriously because she's just like, you know, the amenable, happy dog that's willing to do whatever you want it to do. And I'm just going to be a good little puppy. And I was like, well, first of all, let's start, re stop referring to ourselves as a dog. That's step one. But we had to figure out like, where's that coming from? Where is that, that voice coming from? Where is that storyline coming from? Well, we have to get to the heart's truth. Now, when we get to the part where we, um, you know, go to the mind and we create the strategy, we're going to have very strategic actions. Like this is who you need to market to. This is your message. Is your branding on point? Do you need to uh, reach out to some of your favorite customers and, and ask them questions so you could decide like, okay, well, if I liked working with you, how can I find more of you? All those type of things can happen once you get to that mind part. But if you're not true about the heart part, the mind part doesn't even work. Okay. Because you're trying to solve a problem with a strategy that is not actually piercing your soul. And um, men and women alike will say, if you go to Amber, she's going to pierce your soul. And so I just want, I just want to teach you like starter. This is a starter pack of how to pierce your own soul. Okay. So if you have any questions, please, please, please write to me, amber at amberhurdle.com. Or if you got the newsletter with this, just hit reply. Um, I do, I've actually um, gotten really good about my emails. I'm using a tool called Superhuman. So maybe I will talk about that another time. But if you haven't already, please leave a rating and review, an honest rating and review and, um, and help us out there so we can be in the lives of more budding bombshells just like you so we can create more bold, brave, and waveringly comp confident women in business. I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit amberhurdle.com for more resources like show notes and check out thebombshellbusinesswoman.com to grab my book and download the free bonuses.